Hey everybody, uh, my name is Dwayne Vance and uh, I graduated from Art Center College of Design. I graduated with a transportation design degree. So a lot of the artwork that I create now is uh, automotive based, a lot of vehicle based type stuff. So I do concept art for the video game industry, for the toy industry, um, for the motocross industry, along with uh, several product design uh, places out there as well. And uh, when I'm creating my artwork, uh, definitely my tool of choice is a pencil and a piece of paper. About the most basic thing you can get. And uh, that's one of the biggest reasons I use Painter. It's a great program and it simulates probably the natural medium the best that I've used out there. So I've actually been able to create a palette for you guys uh, that, that goes along with my daily workflow. And uh, I just use uh, simple pencils, erasers, and several uh, other mediums to put in background color. So uh, let me take you through a tour on my palette, and I hope you guys can use it in your daily uh, uh, routine as well. So uh, let's get started. So I'd like to introduce you to the palette that I created. Now all these tools that I put in here are based on my daily workflow for creating concept art and artwork. So I created a pencils palette that has a good selection of different pencils, uh, different erasers, uh, so a few different airbrushes that allow you to lay in color or uh, different shaded areas along with highlights. I have uh, different uh, watercolor brushes that I tend to use for backgrounds, markers which allow me to lay color uh, down for uh, my object, and along with the different uh, pastels too. I use them in the same way as I do the markers, but they just add a little bit of grain and texture to the thing, depending on the kind of things that I'm drawing and working on. And then I have a few effect brushes. Uh, one of the big effect brushes I use is Glow, and I tend to use that for highlighted areas. And all the rest that I have in here I, I will use for creating backgrounds for my object. So that's my uh, palette that I've created. I kept it really simple and hopefully it helps you with your own workflow and customize it as much as you want to fit your own needs. So here we are in uh, Painter 12 and uh, basically what I'm going to take you guys through is to show you my uh, uh, process I, do, I use when I uh, draw concept sketches. And I'm going to show you how I use the palette uh, that I created for you guys. So uh, the topic that I picked for this is uh, a 1950 style uh, jet fighter. Uh, this certain model was actually created in 1945 and then was brought out in 48, so it's actually pre-50s. And I really like this uh, design of this jet, so I'm kind of using it as my base. And uh, so the the sketch that I'm going to do is uh, based on. Um, as if a, a, a director or a, a video game company gave me this and said, we want some 50 style jets to go along with our game. And so I'll use these, um, these jets as cues to, uh, to create my own design. So uh, I initially start out with the uh, light blue pencil, which is one of the custom uh, brushes that I created in my palette. And uh, using the light blue pencil is a common practice, um, even in the traditional in um, the traditional uh, type of materials, where people would use that to lay down a light sketch, and then you could go over it with a, a darker uh, pencil. So when I use the light blue, um, then later on you'll see that I move into using the indigo blue, uh, just so it all matches and looks nice. So as you can see, I'm just uh, laying down my uh, light guidelines just to help myself uh, visualize the plane and, and to uh, give myself um, just a base. And I'm, I'm pretty, pretty much sticking to the same basis as this other plane here, uh, changing it up kind of as if it was uh, a newer concept, maybe a little bit later in the 50s after this. You know, maybe they tried this jet and there were some problems, so... They went back to the drawing board a little bit and kind of redid it, uh, made it a little bit more modern, kind of, you know, changed some intakes, the way the jet, uh, jets are in the back, the way they're mounted. 
uh, I inverted or I put the wings at an angle, the the top wings, and then got rid of the intakes on the side. You know, just changing up little variations on the on the jet. But just to expand on the the palette that I created, I used uh, a lot of um, uh, simple uh, brushes. So I created lots of different pencils, custom pencils. Uh, I like to use uh, colored pencils a lot of times in my work. Uh, I have a, a crimson red and an indigo blue and a black. And then I have this light blue. Those are the uh, colors that I use the most when I do a lot of concept sketching. Oh, and then I also have a brown as well. Uh, I like to use the brown pencil when I do a lot of hot rod sketches. Just kind of gives a, an old time feel to it. But uh, usually in my initial sketch phases, uh, I'm only using one pencil and maybe a couple different erasers, kind of depending on what um, I need to erase. But in my initial line drawing is kind of crude, and then, you know, it's, like I said, it's laying down the foundation for my final drawing. And the beauty about using digital is, you know, I'm not doing several concept sketches at once. I'm actually doing one sketch. And if I don't like something, uh, I'll just erase it in digital, and it works out so nice. Now, if I was working traditionally, I'd probably do, you know, several thumbnails on a page with a, a regular pencil, maybe even a Prismacolor or something like that. So, I, you know, I tend to try to make my digital process uh, similar to my traditional process, but, uh, you know, the advantages that digital bring is that you can be a lot faster. You know, it probably takes you know at least at least half the time for me to create sketches digitally and I create the I think more of a a final sketch versus a a, a rough sketch but uh yeah painter allows you to really just uh you know use these digital materials but they still have a, a traditional feel which is really cool So you can see I'm, you know, correcting my perspective a lot. Uh, you know, I give myself a lot of guidelines uh, when I'm drawing things like this. Um, drawing planes is really funky when it comes to the wings. So uh, you got to use a lot of guidelines to really carry over um, the angles and stuff of your wings. Um, are You know, can really look funky if you don't get them right. And that's why it's nice to use... Uh, um, a reference to kind of see what that looks like as well. So just moving along here with uh, creating my under sketch, still working out ideas, um, going back and forth, erasing some stuff uh, to, you know, things I don't like, uh, changing some proportions here and there. And normally, when when I do stuff for a client too, I wouldn't just do one sketch like this. I would probably do, you know, at least four or five per page. Um, but it allows me to uh, really um, focus in on a, on a decent design instead of just laying down a bunch of thumbnails and just having, you know, I can have quality versus just quantity. I think the client would rather see you know, five good sketches instead of 20 just, you know, haphazardly thrown down on the page. So I try to figure out the design, you know, so it looks pretty cool. So now you can see that I'm moving on to the, um, to more of a final sketch stage now where I'm using the Indiglo, or the, <laughs> sorry, the Indigo Blue pencil. And I'm trying to just create uh, really clean strokes with my pencil. You know, one stroke, not really. I don't keep going over and over again. I'm trying to give myself a really clean line drawing for uh, rendering purposes. And the other thing I try to do too is sometimes the clients have super tight deadlines and you may not have much time to render. So you'll, um, if I had to, I could turn over this line drawing and a 3D modeler could use it to, uh, you know, create the 3D model for the game or the movie or whatever they're using it for, a 
toy. So I try to keep it really clean. Thinking about some of the surfacing, you know, really trying to clean it up. The way uh, drawing section lines, that always helps out with uh, defining the form for 3D modelers. Plus, not to mention yourself, too. You kind of want to know what's going on on the you know, on the different surfaces, so when you render it, it's rendered accurately. I tend to use the uh, the blue combination when I'm doing kind of more um, modern type stuff or uh, cartoony type stuff. And then I'll use my brown pencils like when I'm doing, you know, kind of old-fashioned stuff like uh, hot rods or old motorcycle designs. Um, the crimson red is kind of can be used for either. Uh, it it can have an old time feel to it as well. It's kind of that dark red, and then the um, and then you can use it on modern stuff as well. It, it kind of the crimson can go either way. But uh, I think when I draw jets, I just think of blue, you know. Uh, but crimson would have been cool too. So as I'm moving along, I just kind of trying to think about how this plane is possibly put together, you know, creating section lines that are real, um, using my reference again, you know, to look at the wings, um, see how stuff is built. Start drawing the, the cockpit area. It's these little fine details that you know, give it a more uh, realistic appearance. Uh, you know, definitely putting in the pilot in there, some indication of a, you know, guy sitting in there flying. So you'll get to see me use more of the brushes in the next phase when I start rendering. Uh, this is another thing that I love about Painter is uh, when you get to, when you tilt the canvas, it works so well one of my favorite features in painter you know it i it doesn't you can't really do that in many other programs it's just kind of like flipping your sketchbook around while you're drawing on a table it's always better to flip it that way you can get a nice straight line with the the direction of your arm instead of trying to twist your arm in a funky position so this is uh almost done now i'm just drawing in the um maybe some uh lines for you know to show direction of the sky and kind of more perspective lines so hope you enjoyed the tutorial